Hello everybody, I hope that you are well. My name is Christiane and welcome to my channel Backpacking Bananas. I am turning 30 this week, which means that I am entering a whole new decade. Now I know a lot of YouTubers will make a video sharing their life lessons that they've learned throughout their 20s, but I thought it'd be more appropriate for me to share with you 20 travel lessons that I have learned in my 20s because I have had the privilege of traveling for the majority of my 20s, all thanks to this job on YouTube. And it has certainly not been plain sailing and I have learned a whole load of lessons along the way. And so that is what I'm going to share with you today. The first lesson is you will fill whatever backpack that you buy and it will always be enough. You buy yourself a 40 litre carry-on only, you will fill it and it will be enough. You buy yourself an 80 litre backpack that you have to check in on the plane, you will fill it and it will be enough. In fact, it will be more than enough. I'm so often asked about what size backpack to bring traveling. And honestly, the smaller, the better, just because it's gonna be easier to transport around and you will fit everything you need. You don't need that much. And you really realize that after years of traveling. You couldn't have told me that when I was 20. I wouldn't have believed you. I would I would have said, I, I, I can't do it. But you can, there's always a way. Go with the smaller backpack. Lesson number two is do not wait for your friends to book the trips that you really want to go on, especially the big trips. The small holidays, yes, sure, wait for your friends and do that with them. But if you're wanting to go on a big backpacking trip, this is a dream trip for you, right? You're spending a lot of money. You should be planning this trip for you in my opinion. So if you're planning a trip with someone else and they're giving you grief or you're not agreeing on ideas, I would strongly recommend going solo and it will probably be the best decision that you ever make. Lesson number three, for the love of God, make sure that you have a VPN on your devices. If you don't know, a VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and the lovely VPN Surfshark are the sponsors of today's video. And what a VPN does is it turns your public Wi-Fi connection into a private one. Why is this useful? Well, say you're at an airport or a cafe for example, where you are connected to their public Wi-Fi network. If you don't have a VPN, hackers can actually get into your device via that connection. Whereas if you have your Surfshark switched on with literally just the click of a button, it immediately acts as a virtual shield on your connection, which means that those evil hackers can't get in. What it also means is that you can switch your virtual location to pretty much anywhere in the world with just the click of a button. So if you're abroad and you want to watch Netflix from your home country, or if you are in a particular country, you try to access a certain media and it says, sorry, this media or service is not available in this country. It's annoying when that happens. But like I said, with Surfshark, with the click of a button, you can change your virtual location to anywhere in the world where that service is available. And suddenly the internet is your oyster. So Surfshark is one of the only VPNs that allows you to use it on an unlimited number of your devices with just the one account. And Surfshark are giving you guys three whole months for free when you use my code backpacking or using the link in the description. Lesson number four is that basic travel safety will get you pretty much everywhere that you want to go. So there's countries like Mexico and Colombia and Bolivia, which before I went to them, I was quite wary. I know a lot of people are just because of what you hear in the news. But what I have realized from traveling to these countries is that they're actually completely fine and completely safe to travel when you follow basic backpacker safety. So that just means don't wander the streets at night by yourself. Don't tell strangers that you're traveling by yourself. Don't keep your valuables in an exposed bag where someone can dive into them. Things like this, and I've made a bunch of videos on this, but learning that basic backpacker safety can pretty much take you anywhere. It just opens up so much of the world to what you might be too scared to travel. Unless your government specifically says, do not travel to this country. But other than that, your basic backpacker safety is going to take you a long way. And similarly, lesson number five is things are only as scary as you make them. Time and time again, whether it's myself or whether I hear stories from other people, they're terrified to do something before they've done it. And then they're like, oh, it's fine. All of this scarediness was all in my head. And there's not really anything that other people can say or do that are gonna make you less scared. That's something that you're gonna to have to find within yourself. But next time you are feeling scared about doing something, just remember that it's you creating that feeling in your head. And you are capable of so many things when you pass that barrier. Lesson number six is a good waterproof is worth the investment. There is nothing worse than when you think you have an all right waterproof and you get caught in an actual downpour and 
and you are just soaked to the core. In my head, I've got like a hiking trip in particular in my mind. But you wanna do your research on a waterproof to make sure that it is absolutely 100% waterproof and not just water resistant or rain resistant. No, it's not gonna be good enough if you're actually caught in a downpour. So many people learn these lessons the hard way and unfortunately a good waterproof is expensive. You're normally paying at least 100 pounds for a good waterproof, so that's something to keep in mind as well. If you found something for 20 quid, it's probably not good enough. Lesson number seven is some more things that are absolutely worth the investment. A good SPF, some polarized sunglasses, and a sun hat. I can't stress enough, especially when you're traveling, how much you want to protect yourself from the sun, your eyes, your skin. These days, you will rarely find me in the sun without a hat and sunglasses and SPF all over my face. It's just so, so, so important. And I wish I learned that earlier. Lesson number eight is that change and growth come from going beyond your comfort zone and that you should leave it often. Traveling is not supposed to be easy and nothing is gonna change within yourself if you are not going outside of your comfort zone. So yes, this can be very hard to do, but you know when people go on backpacking trips and they come back and they're like, oh, I found myself. And it sounds so cliche, but you kind of wish you can experience it for yourself because you're like, what is that like? What is it like to find yourself? Where am I? It's from going outside of your comfort zone constantly, not just once, but continuing to push yourself and challenge yourself. That is where growth comes from. Lesson number nine is another one that I should have really taken on board a lot earlier. And that is your health comes before everything. It should be your priority. And if you focus on taking care of your health, you will be invincible. And it's not always easy to take care of your health when you're traveling because you're in a different environment all the time. Nothing's constant. You're living out of a backpack. But what I've done recently, which has helped massively, which you'll know if you've seen the latest video, is I've started drinking AG1, which is a greens powder full of prebiotics, probiotics, superfoods, all kinds of nutrients. You drink this once a day and it means that if you are traveling and just not getting the new, like if you're just living off tacos, do you know what I mean? And you're not getting the nutrients that you need, everything that you need is in this drink that you have in the morning. And I honestly think that's why I didn't get sick in Pakistan this year. So I will link AG1 in the description below as well because you get a few free things if you use my link. Number 10, we're gonna talk a little bit about money. And if I can give you any advice with regards to money and travel, it would be to one, have a budget and know what that daily budget is throughout your trip. And two, to track your spending every single day throughout this trip so that you can see that you are sticking to your budget. Sometimes you're a little bit over, but it means that other days you can be a little bit under. And it just means that your money can be sustained for as long as possible, perhaps even longer than you thought it was gonna stretch. I see it all too often where backpackers are not tracking their spending and they head out on the trip, they're getting carried away, they're spending all their money, and then they have to fly home early because they're like, I've run out of money. You don't want that to happen to you. It's something that's very common in your 20s as well. Lesson number 11 is also about money and it is that if you need to do any kind of currency exchange, you should do it in the country that you are going to. So either bring cash that you want to exchange, maybe you have euros, USD or GBP, bring that cash to the country that you're going to. You can find a Western Union or a currency exchange in the city and exchange your money there. Generally, I would avoid exchanging it at the airports just because generally they have higher exchange rates. But actually, and honestly, my favorite way to keep money is quite literally just on my debit card. I have a Revolut and a Starling, which are both digital banks, so they have super, super minimal exchange fees. And I get out money directly from a local ATM in the country that I'm going to. And here's the kicker. Make sure that you always decline the conversion. When you're getting money out, the ATM will say, hey, do you want to use our conversion, which is gonna be this, or do you want to decline our conversion and use your own bank's exchange rate? And it'll be like, warning, your bank is probably gonna charge you loads and loads of money for this. And so we think you should go with our exchange rate, whereas no, normally their exchange rate is a lot more. That is if you have one of these online banks like Monzo, N27, N26, one of those, Revolut, they're all brilliant for exchange rates. So if you're getting money out of the local ATM, decline that conversion. Lesson number 12, hostels are always a good idea. I feel safest in a hostel and actually, controversially, I feel safest in a dorm room where I'm surrounded by other backpackers who are in the same boat as me. If I'm ever feeling unsure on my trip and I'm not in a hostel, 
I would move to a hostel. Any good hostel around the world also normally puts on events, they connect backpackers together, they'll have a bar with cheap drinks and it's good vibes and I just really really rate hostels and I think you should too. Lesson number 13 is that you should stick air tags in everything or some kind of tracker so you have like one in your main backpack, one in your little backpack, I have one inside my wallet, I want to get another one so I can attach it to my passport as well. I just feel like knowing where your things are at all times is priceless. And on a similar note to that, we'll put it in the same lesson, make sure you've got good travel insurance. I will never ever forget when I was on a super long flight home from Perth to London, I had like three layovers and at some point along the way, my bag got completely lost, like completely, completely. I had traveled through Tehran in Iran and they did not give me like a luggage receipt when I had to like recheck in my bags and so, it was a shambles, it was a mess, and I basically completely lost my luggage, never ever got it back, but I had travel insurance, which meant that I was able to claim over 2,000 pounds worth of cash so that I could essentially buy things back that were in my suitcase. I would have preferred just to have the suitcase back, but it was a nice compromise to receive that amount of money. Lesson number 14 is that a smile is universal and people, no matter what language that they're speaking, respond so well to people's energy and aura. And a smile and a good attitude and showing kindness towards others. I know this sounds so simple, but it's so true. Even when you don't feel like being kind and nice and smiley to others, the difference you will receive in the response from whoever that you are interacting with is insane. Lesson number 15 is that learning a new local skill is going to make your trip so much more rewarding and memorable because it's so common to go on a backpacking trip and you know you do some exploring, you see the sights, but when you actually learn something that is special to that country, whether it's the language, so going to the Spanish school in Central America for example, or learning a local dance, I learned how to salsa dance in Colombia, or learning how to scuba dive, I guess that's not specific to a country but it's better in some countries than others. Those experiences for me make those particular trips so much more memorable to me um, and so much more special and so much more special as well, and I feel so much more connected. So with every trip that you go on, consider learning a new skill. Lesson number 16 is how much you are going to thank yourself when you have documented your trip in some way, whether that's taking pictures, taking videos, writing in a journal. It's just so nice to have something to look back on because you're not gonna remember every single thing that you get up to. And I know people say to live in the moment and I think it's possible to do both, honestly. And I think that documenting your travels is one of the best things that you will do. Which leads me onto lesson 17, which is it doesn't matter what equipment you have to do the documentation, it does not need to be fancy. It can literally be the shittiest little camera and that is good enough because it's gonna create something and it's that something that's gonna keep that memory for you. That when you look at that thing, you're gonna remember the trip. It's something that triggers the memories in your mind. So you don't need a drone unless you really want one. You don't need a super fancy camera. I used to travel with a like a much bigger camera than I do now. Now I literally just travel around with my GoPro because it's waterproof and it's good quality and it's small and it's not too expensive and it's great and it's all I need. And this is my job. If it's not your job, you definitely don't need anything fancy. Like I said, unless you really want to. Lesson number 18 is definitely more of a recent lesson learned and that is the importance of balancing exploration and relaxation so that you don't get travel burnout because travel burnout is is real. A lot of travellers when they're in a destination they just want to do everything and they are going to fill up their itinerary, we're going to go here, 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 here. But that is so knackering and it's also going to stop you from enjoying where you are as much. So remembering that it's okay to say no to things, also remembering that you don't need to do every single thing at a destination, all that does is it gives you a reason to go back one day. So make sure that you are scheduling in relaxation as well as exploration. Lesson number 19 is to travel with the mentality that the best trips don't run smoothly. I don't believe that any backpacking trip should run smoothly. Obviously you plan for it to be smooth, but really you're having those best raw experiences, the ones that are going to make you grow as a person and go outside of your comfort zone when things don't go according to plan. And I think when you know that, 
and those things happen, you're gonna deal with the situation so much better and you're not gonna think, oh, well, was me, my tra trip hasn't been perfect. I don't think it should be perfect. And I think once you adopt that mentality, you will learn to love the flaws in your trip. And finally, lesson number 20, if it's not gonna put you in serious danger or serious debt, I absolutely stand for the whole YOLO motto and doing things for the plot. Because it's true, you only live once, you're only young once. If you meet a travel romance and they want you to travel with them to another country that wasn't on your plans, fuck it. If it's not gonna put you in serious danger or serious debt, just do it. I know people on TikTok cause some of these things are canon event and you cannot interfere, but you need to go through those just like wild and chaotic experiences to learn your own lessons. But I really think that every traveler needs to go through them. And the best experiences really do just come from letting your imagination run wild, doing things that you never thought that you were going to do, taking risks, doing things that you didn't think you were capable of, changing plans. All of this is all part of the experience and it's all what's gonna make your trip so much more memorable. And I feel like that is a nice point to end on. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. My very last video of me in my 20s. So the next time that I film something new, I will be 30. Actually, what I can tell you is a vlog coming up. Um, I'm actually going to Portugal for my 30th birthday and I have invited a bunch of friends. I've rented a huge villa uh, and we're going on a boat. We've got a chef in. It's really <laughs> extra and it sounds like I've put together a Love Island situation of me and all my friends and yes I have done that and yes I'm so excited <laughs> um so I'm gonna vlog it and I'll let you in on all the goss maybe so that video is coming up that will be my first one in my 30s and I will see you guys then bye bye <laughs>